Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church at Worship. Today is Sunday, May 30th, and it is the Holy Trinity Sunday. Welcome to worship. and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teaching and your ways. Turn us again to you 
where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. This past Tuesday, May 25th, was the 37th anniversary of my ordination. But it took my secretary, Shelley, to remind me. I was in her office and she asked me if it was my anniversary and I said, no, Beth and I got married in August. She said, your pastor anniversary. And it still took me a minute. Wow, yes, it was. 37 years ago in P.E. Monroe Auditorium at the North Carolina Synod Assembly, I knelt before Bishop Michael C. D. McDaniel as hands were laid upon my head and in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, See, it was a long time ago, now we say, Spirit. I was ordained into the office of word and sacrament. 
I had spent four years at Lenore Ryan College, three at the Lutheran Theological Seminary at Gettysburg, 15 months on internship, and had received a call to be the pastor of Christ Lutheran Church in Stanley, North Carolina. It was a huge day in my life. My family, Beth's family, along with many members of my new congregation, had gathered for the service. The auditorium was full, and so was my spirit, but I was also anxious. After all, who was I that God would call me into the service of the gospel, that I would speak on God's behalf for the sake of the world? And the more I thought about it, I mean, really thought about it, the more anxious I became. The weight of those hands pressing down on my head wasn't just a few physical pounds of pressure, but the weight of responsibility, of tradition and theology, the weight of the church and all that it stood for, the weight of God. What had I gotten myself into? What was I thinking? Can I really do this? It was then that I remembered the words of my seminary professor, Dr. Eric Grish, who had pulled me aside just before graduation. Michael, he said, give them heaven. That was to be my job, my vocation, my calling to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to the world, to share the gospel, to let them know just how much God loves them. Yes, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I can do this and have to the best of my ability for the last 37 years. Now, what does that have to do with this text? Everything. John 3.16 is probably the most famous passage in all of Scripture. You can say it along with me by memory. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. What's not so familiar is the verse that follows it. Verse 17, indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now, one thing that's helpful to understand here is John's use of the word world, cosmos. As Pastor David Loos points out, for John, the world is that which is at enmity with God, which makes John 3.16 that much more powerful. For God so loved the God-hating world that he sent his Son not to condemn it, but rather to save it. And that is the depth of God's love, the power of God's love. That's God's true nature. God loves even those who have turned their back on him, despised him, doubted him. At eight years old, Danny was a little precocious, but overall he was a, a good kid. Yet one day after being punished, he blew up at his mom. His little mouth spewed those painful words, I hate you, I don't love you, you're not my mom. He stormed off to his room, stuffing his, his book bag with a few clothes, his favorite blanket, and an action figure. Quietly, he opened his bedroom door and checked out the hall and started down the stairs. 
as he opened the front door preparing his getaway, his mom strolled up beside him and nonchalantly asked him where he was going. I'm running away, he said. Oh, that's too bad. I fixed your favorite supper. Do you want me to wrap it up for you? With a dour face and a determined voice, he said, okay. He sat on the bottom step and waited as his mom carefully wrapped his meal and put it into a brown paper bag. On the way to the door, she grabbed a couple of candy bars out of the dish and a, a drink out of the refrigerator. Here you go, she said as she handed him all that she had collected. But between the bag and the book bag and the drink and the candy bars, he, he couldn't figure out how to carry it all. But seeing Danny's consternation on his little face, she offered to carry it to wherever he was going. Okay, he said as they made their way out the door. By the time they were just a few blocks away, Danny was getting tired. Should he keep going? Stop and eat? What's the matter, sweetheart? His mom asked. Um, he said, would it be okay if I came home and we ate together? Well, certainly if that's what you want. You are always welcome at home. I love you even when you're mad at me. <laughs> Danny turned and started back to the house and with a renewed energy he shouted, Race ya! <laughs> Laughing hard as they ran, they arrived at the house winded and sat on the stoop until they could catch their breath. I love you, Mom, he said quietly. I love you too, kiddo. And they shared a grand feast fit for an eight-year-old. Give them heaven, Michael even when they don't want it or don't think they need it. God's love is unconditional. It's not dependent on us. You see, I believe there is a little Danny in all of us. We, we say things and do things that pain God and one another. But God never turns is back to us. God continues to provide for us. God walks with us, carrying our baggage. God continues to pour out grace upon grace, heaping grace, that our hearts might be turned and we might come back home. God's love is never a weapon of who's in and who's out, but Rather, a net of love cast on all creation, as St. Paul reminds us in Romans 8. Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing meets nada. The truth is that if salvation were dependent on us, we wouldn't make it. Like Nicodemus, we have questions. So many questions. We have doubts. We don't understand and can't comprehend the ways of God, but the God who created us loved us enough, even in our worldly state, to send Jesus, to grant us eternal life, 
and through God's Holy Spirit called us through the gospel to share that love. That is our baptismal covenant. And all of us are called to share the love of God, to participate in the mission and ministry of the church. This is not my ministry, but God's ministry into which we are all called to proclaim in word and deed the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ. Give them heaven, y'all. Amen. the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy, hear you our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that, led by your Spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this worshiping community that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith we remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. At this time, I want to take just a moment to say thank you. Thank you for your gifts, your offerings, your tithes, your contributions, your prayers, and all that you do for the sake of the ministry we share here in the Lincolnton community and throughout the world. Thank you for your work and your generosity. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.